just did their very, very best, including Phil here and Paul Martinez here and Tony Thompson, wherever he is. Tony is wandering around somewhere, so you were just sort of keeping the rhythm, hoping that you uh, knew the song. I, wa I just wanted to come here and not just sing my old boring songs. I wanted to come here and play with somebody. And uh, you see, so I said to Robert, could I play? This was a while ago. And then, um, and I wanted to play with Eric, you see. So I just came here to play the drums and I, I had a good time. So that was what I came here for. You've been a busy man. Uh, you didn't rehearse any then for this thing. Did you, two, did you two get together prior to this event and say, okay, remember? We, uh, we met at Pangbourne Railway Station. He had a wonderful girlfriend at the time. What was her name? <laughs> Seriously, though. When? Ah, this morning with Tony Thompson. Name or number? Yeah, what? You did get together then this morning. Yes. You got together. We did for about an hour and a half, some of, you know. I'd be interested to know, I'd be interested to know what that rehearsal was like. I mean, it just came together. Very quick. Very fast and furious indeed, but yeah, the feeling was there, it was really good. I mean, musically, it was much better than, than what just happened because we had a lot of, the elements weren't quite with us, if I can use that term in the 80s. Um, of course, I am in the 80s, I have my own career. Uh, yeah, so it was very hard to work with the wedges and stuff, but we know when we play those songs what we do, you know? I know it's been a while since we played them. Johnny again, that monitor guy. I mean, why they don't pension him up? When he came back from Vietnam, he was, you know, I thought that... <laughs> would, it, would it be silly or overbearing to say that it was nostalgic in a way, though? Did you feel something? I don't know. I mean, it, it ain't time to think about it, really. We just said we'd do it. This is the right reason to do what we did. Yeah, these have done it before, right? I was just sitting there watching. I saw about 90,000 kids out there all with their arms up, loving every minute of it. So, although the ragged edges, and there are probably a lot of ragged edges because th they were a band, you know, and they would sit, but I think that the kids out there actually loved every minute of it, which I thought was, the, which was very strong. I was just I wasn't playing half the time, I was just watching, and I thought it was fantastic. Which brings us to the cause, why everybody's here. Um, rock and rollers, good people to uh, be working on such a cause. What does it mean to you, Live Aid? Well, there are many, many um, things that it means. It means that everybody's doing their best for the right reasons today. And I think uh, I've heard somebody say that everything will be solved by today's effort, and I think that that's like a gross overstatement. But I think maybe you could do this a little more often, maybe, or on the other hand, it might take the edge off things. I mean, this is probably a one-off. Uh, but it needs to be a lot more effort and a lot more... The, the awareness is there now, I should imagine, you know? And we just have to hope that the problem is being alleviated somewhat and the distribution of the alleviation is, is done correctly, you know? Well, Bob, as it can be done, though, which is the, the nicest thing about it. It is seen to be done and organized, and it's great. Bob Geldof said that uh, the reason he put this concert together was so that people wouldn't forget about it. So hopefully, I, I, think, I think the thing is that we, it, it's become a very high-profile event now. This is very, very high-profile, and, and the singles that we are the world, feed the world, um, it's made it, people think about it. And of course, however much money is raised, of course, it won't be enough, and of course, it won't do the things it's supposed to do. But all, we can, all anybody can do is really just draw the attention to it. And, and of course, because it's such a high-profile thing, people are going to ask where the money's going. It's not just one of those things you put, you know, you, you donate a bit of money and it's a charity you never hear of again. People are going to want to know what happens to the $10 million that's raised, you know. And so they're going to ask questions and people are going to have to have answers. And so which chances are it means it's going to go there. And it doesn't really take a lot, you know, if, um, I mean, I don't want to sound like a preacher, but I mean, if everybody was to give a bit more, if everybody was to give $5, that would be a fucking lot of money, you know. Sorry, you have to edit that out, can't you? But I mean, it's a lot of money, you know. And I think if... Um, all, I thought all this is, is just drawing a, very, a lot of attention to the problem. Hopefully this will keep the ball rolling. When you found out that it looked like a shipload of whiskey was going to that country, you know? You remember that? It was like, there was a, a hold of a ship was full of scotch, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, really, maybe, anyway. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Well, it wasn't coming to my house because I haven't been there for a while. But, um, yeah. Phil's absolutely right. It's high profile. Everybody now is totally aware of it. The thing is, if you do it too often or you make it... Uh, um, uh, and a, no, no, probably not. Well, maybe it's somebody else's turn. Yeah. You don't think we can do this again next year then, Paul? Well, next year... It's too late, isn't it? Sure, yeah. If we can do it this year, maybe 
the, uh, the enthusiasm will last long enough until next year we do it again, we keep the ball rolling. I don't know. That's what Bob Geldof hopes. It'll be the same thing, though. I mean, other people can do different things, but... Uh, oh, different songs. Different songs, yes. Yeah. I know. We might, yes, yeah, we might have <laughs> learned we rehearsed something. Tonight. That would be great. Uh, briefly, I'll let you go. Future of Led Zeppelin, I mean, any more shows like this, perhaps? Now, come on. Would you ever play again with these guys? Yes. Any plans in the future to do that tonight, as of now? I'm in, uh, I'm in Cleveland tomorrow night. I'd like to see you all there. And on uh, Wednesday night, I shall be in uh, Hartford, Connecticut. Then I'm going to Toronto and blah, blah. But it'd be great. Wouldn't it be nice to do this more than once? Well, you'll, you've left it nebulous for it. That's